some of you fast food freaks like me, I'm just kidding, um, will recognize this machine all too well. This is a point of sale system commonly found in many McDonald's locations. Um, but there's a little bit more to it than just a point of sale system. This is basically an industrial touchscreen computer that runs uh, runs on an Intel Pentium 2 233 and it actually is a fully functional Pentium 2 system. Um, I picked this up at the Landfill of Wonders and uh, it was absolutely the most disgusting thing I ever grabbed from any landfill. Um, it was it was disgusting. It was all black and greasy and it smelled like french fries. I um, But I knew what it was so I grabbed it anyway. I actually grabbed three of them. And I took two of them and I made one working unit. And the other one I gave to a coworker. Let's take a look underneath. You can see just what we're dealing with. Now the, what I ended up doing was completely disassembling the unit um, piece by piece and cleaning everything with WD-40, all the aluminum, or I'm sorry, all the stainless steel. Uh, FYI, this entire unit is made from stainless steel, including the display housing front and back. Underneath you can see, this is the view that no customer ever gets to see. Here's the power supply input. Um, this particular unit had a defective power supply, so it wouldn't turn on. So I took the power supply from another one and used that. But we have a LAN port, VGA, that I believe is a cache drawer port, possibly. Two USB, um, another LAN port, that could be for something proprietary. A COM port, two of them. We have a PS, I'm sorry, a parallel and a PS2 port. And here is an expansion slot, PCI expansion slot. Didn't think you'd see one of those, did you? Underneath we have, I didn't even notice this until now, unbelievable. I did not notice this. That might be a reset switch. Now this cover is removable. This contains a, a plug for something. I, I believe it might be for a card reader. What's nice about this unit is it is a fanless design, so it doesn't suck in any grease from the uh, fast food chain. Um, underneath there's a little cover here, and in that cover is a battery pack. As far as I can tell, this unit has a battery backup system. If the power kill shuts off, it'll stay running for enough time to shut it down. Oh yeah, the model number. This is a Panasonic JS170FR. And in front here we have a nice LED dot matrix display. And the monitor is adjustable. Works pretty nicely. Go ahead and turn it on. It actually does have a two and a half inch hard disk drive inside. I believe it's a five gig drive. And as you can clearly see, it is a standard Windows box, or PC anyway. And 256 megs of RAM. I actually upgraded it because I happened to have a whole bunch of PC133 memory kicking around, so I, I figured what the hell. It had 64 megs originally. And here are the status lights. LAN, hard, di hard disk drive, power, and card, whatever that is. This is the startup screen. And this is when it starts to load the McDonald's proprietary point of sale software. Yes, it still contains the proprietary software. And as you can see in just a minute, Start register program, there it is. McDonald's Corporation PC POS. This is actually running on top of MS-DOS 6.22. And as you can see, it was last updated in 2006 with the latest version. 
I have no idea what store this came out of, but there is a theory that it came out of the Merrimack McDonald's before they gutted the building. And I don't know what they've, they've it's no longer a McDonald's. So. Along with this, I found about a dozen or so uh, ceiling mounted Weiss terminals, which were used to display order information. But I didn't grab any of those. This does take a little while to uh, start up. And I've noticed this dot matrix display doesn't, dis doesn't show anything. I'm not entirely sure why. Um, another interesting feature I found while disassembling the unit, this top, or this screen layer overlay is actually replaceable. See, it goes right into the McDonald's point of sale system. And this, I believe, is the last transaction that it had ever uh, completed, which was a, an Angus mushroom, one small chocolate, I mean, it could be chocolate milk. There's the total tax. And here it is, in all its glory. Now, I wonder what this does. Oh, that's the sleep switch. Right? Or is that the power switch? Oh, crap. Okay, so we're back. That turns out is the power switch. Um, okay, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to order some food here. Let's see. I think I'm going to order lunch. I want a quarter pounder with a medium Coke. And that's where it stops because the software is widely network based. It can't pull down price information unless obviously it's connected to the server which has the updated pricing. Um, and once the order is placed with the server, of course it sends it to the order processing monitors. Um, I did work in a McDonald's briefly when I was in middle school actually. And um, this is the exact same software that I used back then. I've determined that this machine is approximately 10 years old. It was built around 2000 to 2001, and um, it's amazing how how well built it is. It's, it's lasted all this long and still has plenty of life left in it. But anyway, so it does work. Um, I can't really do much without being connected to a server, but not active. If I hit done and then I hit fries, oh, here we go small fry. See, it won't display the order information because obviously it can't. So this is stuck on the display. Um, it doesn't respond to any keyboard commands while booted into the uh, software, but if I restart it, control alt delete here, I can, inv I can actually uh, uh, cancel the software from loading which allows me, let's see, I think I have to do F5. That cancels the auto-execute that file. Oh, crap. Here we go. So now we're in DOS. Oh, D-I-R slash B. Let's see what's on a typical McDonald's cash register. Um, this is it. This is a Panasonic com file. This is probably a driver. A Panasonic data, PKN zip, SRAM config, auto execute bat. I'll show you that. That's kind of cool. Um, C software config, C tab, I tab. I'm going to do some more playing around here and see if I can't mess with it a little bit. Ultimately, my plan is to either sell the thing or find some really cool use for it. Um, I'm leaning towards selling it because these machines typically get about $200 or so on eBay. So, in working condition. Obviously, this one was not working when I got it. I had to repair it, but now it works. What's... let's see here. So now that you've gotten to know the the interface on the McDonald's POS system, 
Let's take a look at what the insides look like that nobody really gets to see unless they're repairing the system. Uh, the layout is fairly simple. Again, it is an all steel construction. Stainless steel uh, fascia and a um, and like a low grade PC chassis grade uh, stainless steel structure. And here's the main board with the monitor and touch screen connections. Here is a configuration switch. I noticed that one of these switches was set differently from the the other machine I had and it was causing the touch screen not to work. So I, I set this exactly as the other one was. Here are the two memory slots. These are standard PC-133 DIMMs. We have two IDE interfaces using a smaller sized um, IDE connector going to a laptop sized hard drive. Here is the only um, PCI card, uh, PCI slot it's on this riser card and there was an optional obviously something else was here too or could have been here but not big enough to be another PCI could have been proprietary oh, wait never mind the here on the other side is that those pins that I'm seeing so there's another slot for something I don't know what that's all about power supply is here And in the front we have the dot matrix fluorescent display, which doesn't... I don't know if it works or not. I have no way of testing it. Um, the software is not allowing anything to be displayed, so... I have no way of knowing. I think it's supposed to display the total... and maybe a message like, Welcome to McDonald's or something. But I, I don't know if it works or not. So there it is. Pretty simple. Oh yeah, here's the processor. This is a Pentium 2. And there's the heat pipe that goes to a heat sink that actually covers the front of the machine. From here to here. So, it does a very nice job of drawing the heat away. But it gets very warm. You can feel it right now. It's quite toasty. And there's the unusually large coin cell battery. For the, uh, the clock memory. To CR245. Oh, 2450, oh, that's it. Not much else to see. Provisions for a second hard drive are here. Um, but there is no full-size drive bay, so... If you wanted to connect a floppy drive, external floppy drive, or a CD-ROM drive, there is a proprietary interface right here. And that's what I believe that is designed for. So, that's that.